So welcome to uh, chapter three, the past in the present. I'm going to continue talking a little bit about uh, statues. Uh, and we ended up uh, last, uh, last time uh, looking at uh, some uh, more recent statues, uh, which had reflected them uh, changes uh, in uh, social attitudes or a particular um, consensual social attitudes or government social attitudes, perhaps. Um, uh, which allowed uh, people to be celebrated in public when they weren't uh, previously and they couldn't be um, previously. Uh, here's a more subtle uh, uh, example, perhaps, which is uh, uh, this is in, in, again in a station in London, I think it's in King's Cross Station. Uh, and this gentleman is one of the engineers who designed <coughs> and um, supervised the building of the uh, one of the important railway lines um, back then in the uh, the uh, towards the second half of the uh, 19th century. Uh, so here, it's not that there was a particular prejudice against engineers and nobody wanted to have a, a, st a statue of an engineer. Uh, uh, it's simply that um, the traditions of statue presentation, the, the traditions of public uh, valorization of people's contribution to society uh, were not seen in the same way in the past. So in the, in the 19th century, you've got essentially, you know, the, 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 the queen and the saint and the, um, uh, and the politician. Uh, and this uh, late, very late 20th century um, statue, if I remember correctly, uh, is, is the engineer. Now, this is uh, uh, perhaps uh, an advance of the democratic spirit. You have the people who matter are not just the queen who opens the railway, but also the people actually do the work. Now, we don't yet here have a statue of the workers, uh, many of them Irish, uh, who actually built the railway, but nevertheless we have this uh, recognition of uh, um, uh, work as opposed to simply recognition of status. And so these are ways of presenting the past and the present. And really, although you will need to collect examples, they are all around you. The past and the present is, ex is extremely present, one might say. Of course, uh, some statues uh, lead to debate uh, and uh, controversy. Uh, and quite, quite recently, there was a proposal to uh, erect a statue to Margaret Thatcher in Grantham. Uh, Grantham is the town that she was born in. Uh, now, this is interesting because the political content of a statue depends on who it is, on how they are presented, but also where they are presented. So it's a very different pr uh, proposal uh, to build a statue of Margaret Thatcher in the town that she was born, or uh, than it would be to uh, suggest the building <coughs> or the erecting of a statue to Margaret Thatcher in front of the Houses of Parliament. Uh, certainly, we have a Conservative government at the uh, at the moment. They certainly have the uh, the power and the influence to suggest the erecting of a statue of Margaret Thatcher in front of the House of the Parliament. That they, uh, they have every right to do so. They're not going to do this because they already have to, to defend, they think, many controversial things and they don't want to uh, make people angry without any great um, um, profits. Um, now, uh, Margaret Thatcher is a particular, uh, particularly controversial uh, prime minister. Uh, now, some people say that this is made worse uh, by the fact that she was the first uh, woman prime minister. That is that they say that she is uh, more hated because she was a woman prime minister. Uh, but certainly it's true that she was at the centre of major changes in the welfare state and in privatisation and in the establishment of uh, neoliberalism as the way of organising uh, British society. So for today, for example, the whole neoliberal um, um, changes have gone much further uh, in Britain than in France. So, for example, you pay a lot of money to go to university in Britain because the official idea is you go to university to get a better job for yourself. Um, and therefore you should pay because it's for yourself. Yes, so an individualist way of looking at the world um, rather than uh, seeing education as a, as a social um, good. Similarly, um, pensions, old age pensions, as we used to call them, uh, retirement pensions, are largely privatised in Britain and each individual has to be thinking about how they're saving this and how they're saving that uh, uh, during uh, their lives or they will find, find themselves only with a very, very low uh, state pension. 
Um, whereas in France, there's still a very widespread um, socialized uh, pension um, system. So here we have this uh, controversy. Should Margaret Thatcher statue been erected in Grant? And notice this is the local newspaper doing an opinion poll, wanting to know how many people are in favor and how many people are against. Uh, I can't remember actually what happened this is, uh, uh, two years ago, this, uh, this, this article, but uh, certainly Margaret Thatcher was uh, uh, more disliked than most. Uh, when she died a few years ago, there were people having parties in the streets uh, and a particular song, Ding Dong the Witch is Dead, uh, got very high up in the popular music charts. Uh, and so there's some, something very, very um, particular. And again, an example, of course, of the past and the present because, uh, uh, because she hadn't been a prime minister for uh, some time. Uh, not all um, statues are uh, controversial in a political manner, of course. And here, here we have uh, uh, an interesting example uh, where um, uh, people uh, in, in the local town, I think it's Barnsley, but I'm not absolutely sure, where Barry Hines uh, w lived and worked, wanted to have um, a statue uh, made uh, to celebrate the writer's work. Now, Barry Hines is a, a novelist. I certainly recommend his work, who wrote a whole series of novels about working class life. Uh, and many of them, oh, sorry, several of them, uh, were made into films by Ken Loach. So you can imagine a little bit of the style. Uh, certainly, uh, he, uh, he, anyway, his most famous novel is A Kestrel for a Knave, uh, which was made into the film Kes, K-E-S, which has been recognised as, as one of the one of the classics of uh, of British cinema. cinema. Barry Hines also wrote a a, um, a novel called The Blinder about a young football player, and, and a series of other novels who, whose names I've forgotten. So here we have a memorial statue project where what they want to do is to uh, have a statue of one of his most well-known characters from the film that it was that his novel was made into. So here you have, uh, you can see the young working class lad from the 50s, I think, uh, 1950s, uh, with the hawk that he had trained, that he had trained, uh, and this would make a, a statue, uh, which would, um, what would this do? Well, it would encourage local pride in the town. Look, we have produced very fine uh, novelists, and also uh, a certain pride in working class identity, and yeah, the, the sort of, uh, uh, um, the intelligence uh, in very hard circumstances shown by uh, this character. Uh, in the in, in in the novel, both the novel and the film, I do recommend. Um, but it, it's also very important uh, who pays for a statue. So it's quite a different idea when the government says, "Okay, we're going to have a statue of so and so, and here it is." Uh, and that's quite different from when they try to, well, from when it's a local government deciding, or indeed when it is from the voluntary sector. That is, that people are asking their friends to give money, and if we get, I don't know how much a statue costs. Uh, but it must cost quite a bit, you know, quite a few thousand pounds. Uh, um, and then you need a contract to clean it and, uh, 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 and so on. So uh, uh, here you have uh, the statue and you can see they're trying to raise about a hundred thousand pounds, I think, and they've already got at this point, seven, 18,000 pounds. So this is important because collecting money from many, many people, it gives it a different meaning when the statue is put up because it's a representation of the will of a large number of people and not just the representation of the will of the government and that it gives a little bit more information actually Barry, Barry Hines was born uh, in Barnsley uh, and he, he wrote one he wrote this uh, this novel um, uh, among among others Let's see if I can find some more information about him uh, so we're looking at the whole series of statues then and a whole series of um, controversies uh, uh, about uh, 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 about them. Here another one here, uh, a new statue of suffragette leader Emmeline Pankhurst was unveiled in Manchester and here interestingly enough there was also going to be a march, so a political march uh, exactly a hundred years after the day that first women were allowed to vote in the UK, so this, this, so this is in 2018, uh, and uh, to celebrate that they established this uh, that they erected the statue and hundreds were going to demonstrate to show uh, uh, their hopes for further progress uh, uh, on the position of women uh, in, in, uh, in, in society. One more here uh, in Oldham, uh, another town in the north of England, uh, where Annie Kenny, uh, a, a local suffragette, uh, got, her, got her own 
um, statue here. And, uh, and uh, uh, this has also been an attempt to give a uh, wider uh, impression of who the suffragettes were. Um, there are a couple of uh, very famous suffragettes like the Pankhursts, who were from the elite families, and, and often you know, leaders were from elite families because their lives were so much easier, they could get involved more easily. But not all, and indeed Annie Kenner was, Annie Kenny was a mill worker, she was an ordinary factory worker, and there were a certain number of ordinary uh, factory worker women uh, who were involved in these suffragettes, and this is a way of, again, um, celebrating it. One final example, um, there has been uh, in Cardiff, I think it's in Cardiff, yes, in the capital of Wales then, uh, a suggestion for a statue to commemorate the first black woman who was the head teacher of a school uh, in Wales. Uh, so here we have, um, first of all, a question of Welsh heritage because they, 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 she's the first black head teacher in Wales. And so in Cardiff, they want statues which represent Wales. They don't just want generic statues, you know, well, let's have Nelson Mandela and, uh, and the Duke of uh, Wellington and so on. Uh, they want the particular Welsh statues. And the other thing which is interesting here is again, uh, it is uh, connected with um, popular uh, demand because they had a poll, they had a vote. They had a vote and thousands of people, it doesn't say exactly how, how many, voted uh, in this, uh, this uh, uh, poll organised by BBC Wales. Uh, and this is the, per the, the person they um, voted, uh, vote, vote, voted for. They, they could have found a better photograph. I'm sure they, she, she had better photographs. Um, there you go. And the, and the statue was, is be, to be placed uh, in the centre, in Central Square, uh, Cardiff. So you can see there's a wide, there's a lot of uh, choice uh, involved uh, in in, uh, in in statues uh, and uh, who proposes the statue, where do they decide to put it, where do they get the money from, what does the person represent uh, in, in the culture, I mean, whether it's local pride, national pride, class pride and so on. I have a couple of examples here from a long way away, this is from Australia, uh, because once, uh, once a statue has been put up, of course, that's not the end of it, uh, because you can see on the right um, the base of the statue of Captain Cook, which is in the, uh, in the biggest park um, in um, Sydney. Uh, Sydney, yes, in, uh, in Sydney, so very, very, a bit like Nelson, yeah, but Nelson in, in the centre of Trafalgar Square, you have Captain Cook uh, in the centre of, of Sydney, and uh, it has recently been the uh, anniversary, the 250th anniversary of Captain Cook's uh, expeditions, and there's been a huge number of events, and one of the reactions has been people to say, no, let's not be proud, no pride in genocide, because uh, um, uh, Captain Cook's uh, uh, role was as a scout to see what places would be useful for the British Empire as colonies or, or, or otherwise. And the uh, medium term result was the arrival of the first fleet uh, in Australia and the uh, terrible uh, decline um, of the Aboriginal peoples um, uh, killed either by the wars or uh, indeed by illnesses because their, uh, their uh, relative isolation had meant that they did not um, uh, possess, uh, possess the natural defences against uh, uh, against uh, illnesses. So that's you know, once the statue is up, that's not the end of the story. And you, just on, on the left, you have a, an Aboriginal um, statue. I can't actually remember the story about that, uh, but the uh, uh, so again a, a an expression of, uh, of, of Aboriginal pride this time. Of course, this year, um, the whole question of statues has become much hotter, partly in the United States, and I think in France we hear more about the United States, that the Black Lives Matters movement wanted to get rid of a number of statues, in particular in the south of Confederate generals, uh, the Confederate generals then who fought on the southern side in the US Civil War, uh, partly to defend slavery. Uh, interestingly enough, these statues were not uh, erected during the Civil War. They were erected much later uh, as part of a defense of the uh, of segregation and of, and of white um, uh, supremacy, and therefore moving these statues in the United States, although it's rather controversial, has also been considered particularly important because um, they um, symbolized white supremacy. 
Now I'm going to stick to Britain because that's what I know about. And this moved into Britain. Now it's it. There have always been black movements in Britain, but I think it's fair to say that the Black Lives Matter uh, movement in the state, which is the biggest um, uh, radical movement for 50 years, it's a huge uh, thing. You, you mustn't forget that the number of small towns where there have been uh, demonstrations in in uh, the United States is completely unusual. Whereas in Britain, in, in Britain, uh, the, we the, we got our, our bit as well. And this uh, most famous example is the statue of a slave owning merchant uh, in uh, Bristol, uh, which is a town on, on the east um, of uh, England uh, and which was um, which made a lot of money from slavery. Uh, and a, a group of demonstrators took it down, took down the statue and threw it in the river or the canal. I can't remember if it's a canal or a river. Uh, and here it is being taken out again uh, of the river and put somewhere in a museum. Uh, and so this is a very conservative newspaper, the Daily Mail. And you see here their opinion of this toppling the past. So this is the idea that if uh, this is one opinion, of course, a very, in this case, very conservative opinion. If you take down the statues from the past, you are not respecting history. Uh, and in this case, you're actually toppling the past, according to the Daily Mail. That is that you've got the past, you're demolishing the past, the past is not there anymore. Um, uh, now, interestingly enough, although the Daily Mail is very much opposed to this, um, they, do say, they do refer to it as a cultural revolution. Yeah, so they, 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 they're seeing it as something, in, they, they're recognizing that it's a very popular idea to get rid of some of these statues. Uh, but they are opposed to it. And there you see Sarah Vine, then a cons conservative commentator, uh, to erase our history. So this is the same idea, yeah, that if you take down this slave owner's um, st uh, st uh, statue, you are erasing your hi our, our history. Of course, the other side of the argument says, no, on the contrary, people walked past for, for 50 years, people walked past this statue, not even thinking about him. And now, because this statue has been taken down, millions of people are learning about who he was and what uh, slavery uh, was in, uh, in, in Britain and so on. So this is a, a huge ongoing debate. And, and, and again, the important thing is for you to, uh, uh, to be able to explain the different arguments. That doesn't mean you have to be neutral, but the main thing is not what, what opinion you give. Uh, here's a, uh, another incident for also from this year, from the same uh, idea. Well, what happened is that there were a number of uh, statues which were being uh, commented on, graffiti, or occasionally uh, taken down. Um, and uh, the government were a little worried, the Conservative government were a little worried that the statue of uh, Winston Churchill might be uh, a target. And indeed, uh, a group of far right uh, uh, organizations said, We will defend the Winston Churchill statue. And so it became a, um, a a hot issue and so the government decided to board it up now was this to protect it against anti-racist demonstrators or was it to me to make it so that it could not be a center of mobilization for far right and fascist demonstrators well pro probably a bit of both uh, but when they did it then here you have then the uh, uh, the um, I think this is actually photoshopped actually rather than actually painted on, uh, but it's, it, it, it's a kind of jokey uh, attack on Winston Churchill. Don't open this box, there is a racist inside. Uh, now, um, that uh, Winston Churchill held uh, racist opinions is, is not controversial. Uh, if you read what he says about Gandhi uh, and the Indians, he certainly was very much uh, uh, in there. And so uh, this, uh, opens up all the questions of what do you do uh, with people who are respected for some things they did, but also uh, uh, had opinions which are completely unacceptable. Uh, the, one of the debates that you can see, if you want to look on the internet and watch people getting very angry with each other, uh, uh, check out Jane Austen and slavery. Uh, the attitude of Jane Austen to slavery, which has caused a, a huge number of people to, to tweet uh, and so on, which you know, it's, it's fine. Uh, and here we have a cartoon about the same, uh, about the same uh, situation. Uh, that is the idea of um, statues being uh, uh, boxed in so as to be protected or, uh, of course, if you have um, a statue of a government hero 
and you have to put a box around it to protect it, it kind of destroys the, the object of having a statue, which is meant to uh, encourage consensual valorization of the person. Uh, and in this particular case, this is a joker, this is a cartoonist who has put um, a box around, this, this is actually Trafalgar Square, that's in the National Library, and this huge thing is Nelson's column, uh, with Nelson at the top, and it's been boxed in, we imagine by the government, uh, and somebody has written on it, my name is Ozymandias, King of Kings, look on my work, she might uh, and despair. Uh, uh, and that is to say, you know, however great I was when I'm alive, afterwards history will ask for accounts and history will um, make me be judged more, more rationally. This is a quotation um, from one of the great sonnets um, of the English language by um, Shelley, uh, which, I, which I have here, uh, which I'm going to read to you. I met a traveller from an antique land who said, two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them on the sand, half sunk, a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions read, which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things, the hands that mock them, and the heart that fed. And on the pedestal, these words appear, my name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains. Round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless, and bear the lone and level sands stretch far away. This is one of the few uh, poems that many British people know. Oh, I was expecting it to say uh, um, uh, Shelley and the date, but it doesn't. Uh, so the, the idea here is that, you know, they were great and they have the statues and the glory, but, you know, sooner or later, uh, people are going to come and ju judge them. Uh, and we're not going to accept to have um, uh, slave owners um, uh, in our uh, uh, public squares. Final example, final couple of examples on uh, uh, statues. Um, this is the Kinter Transport statue at London Liverpool Street, Street Station. You can see I spend a lot of my time in train stations. Uh, and this, despite the little boy in the middle, he's not, he's not important. Um, this commemorates, you can see, uh, this commemorates the arrival of a large number of Jewish children rescued from Germany and Poland, and a little bit from Czechoslovakia, in 1938 and 1939, um, when life was so dangerous um, for Jewish people in Germany and Austria and Poland, um, that they were willing to send their children away uh, on their own. Uh, and many, a number of, uh, several thousand uh, children, unaccompanied minors, as they say, were accepted into Britain and given the right to live here uh, because of the persecu persecution of Jews. Now, that was a, it was kind of official program, um, although there was a lot of private money uh, involved, a lot of uh, philanthropists got involved of a certain number. Um, uh, there were also more informal things. I mean, some uh, Jewish families literally asked tourists to take their children. Um, it's a terrible, terrible uh, remembrance to to have to, to, to look at. Although, uh, of course, it, what's important here is that they, they're commemorating people being saved from uh, murderous anti-Semitism. And so it's, it's a little bit um, um, upbeat. Let's move away from uh, statues. And uh, there are a number of other ways that public space is occupied in this way because governments or local governments or sometimes voluntary associations, trade unions, groups of people want to remember uh, people from the past, uh, and one important thing is the um, is the road the, the road signs. Uh, so in Britain, uh, this last uh, thirty years or so, you have a number of Mandela streets. Of course, we're unsurprised to see Victoria Street. This is in Nutsford in the south of England. Oh dear, there's another Victoria Street there behind behind me, uh, which is the uh, in in Hong Kong. And there you have uh, another uh, couple of things. And notice, so you can have the names of streets, also the names of schools. Now, there's still, there's relatively little tradition in Britain 
um, of naming schools after um, famous people, you know, like in France, you have, you know, the Lycée Georges Brassens and, uh, so, uh, uh, and so on and so forth on uh, Robespierre. There's relatively little, there's still a large number of uh, religious names uh, of, of, of schools. I remember the situation with religion in schools. Uh, in Britain, all schools have some religion in them which the children listen to or don't listen to, you know, they don't necessarily listen to it very much, uh, but it's certainly, there's no um, tradition of uh, um, insisting that the church should not have any influence on schools. This is not because of a difference in uh, character or personality between the British and the French, uh, it's because of history. That is that when mass education came along in the 1880s, 1890s, 1900s, um, in France, the church, because France was still a rural country, most people living in the countryside, the church was still very powerful indeed, um, and the uh, modernizing uh, uh, classes who uh, were influential in government clashed with the church. Uh, whereas in Britain, they'd made a compromise many long before, and by the time mass education came along, uh, the church had been already been losing influence, and so they made a different kind of compromise. Uh, notice that here we have uh, 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 roads, uh, road signs which are names of imperial heroes, Gordon, General Gordon, uh, uh, and Kitchener. Kitchener was, then was a, a hero of the hero of the uh, empire, of the British Empire in Africa, and also uh, a hero of the First World War. He was the he's the famous man with the moustache uh, on the uh, poster. Your country needs you. Uh, which was uh, used in the First World War uh, before the American version was used later. So you can see that Kitchener gets his road sign in Ottawa. Uh, and uh, I would think that if I looked uh, carefully, I could find Kitchener streets somewhere in Africa where, uh, uh, because sometimes, you know, even though decolonization has taken place, some of the symbols will still be around there because uh, there hasn't been the uh, they moved to, to, to remove them. So street signs, uh, we had uh, um, a controversy, of course, that became controversial in France very recently when President Macron, Macron declared, we will not be changing the names of any streets because of their role in, uh, in, uh, in history in the past. Yeah, so uh, so a, a particular uh, point of view on that. And here, here you have in France then the, 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 some radical groups like the Front Uni des Immigrations et des Quartiers Populaires uh, who will uh, uh, sometimes campaign or, 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 or explain about um, the, this idea of what do street names symbolizing. La colonisation c'est fini, regarde ton nom de rue. I say that because they, the, route, the road just next door that I'm pointing to now uh, is the Rue Colbert. So uh, it's, uh, it's all um, very current. Uh, here we have uh, something a little different, uh, and this is the, the blue plaques. Uh, now, they're called blue plaques because of their colour. Um, but you see more and more of these. Over the last 50 years, you've seen more and more of these in Britain, and also in France. Now, they're not quite the same. I mean, in Paris, the ones I see mo most often are, are the ones saying, so-and-so was shot here in 1945. Whereas in Britain, since Britain has not been invaded since 1066, uh, we don't get, we, we get almost none of this, you know, so-and-so died here in, in uh, on an, uh, and certainly not in an in invasion. Uh, but we get these uh, uh, commemoration plaques in places that things happen. This is the magic of place. People like to be, know that they're in the place where something happens. So here you have Sir Winston Churchill, lived and died here, so that's on his, on his house. And this, the Sir so Winston Churchill one was, was established by the local government, the Great London Council. Sometimes it's a national organization which established them, English heritage. Yeah. John Lennon, musician and songwriter, lived here in 1968. Of course, these more, more recently, you've had a wider selection of people being recognized in this way. No, no longer just uh, national heroes like Sir Winston Churchill, but um, popular um, uh, culture characters. Alan Turing, the gentleman I showed you this, the statue of. Again, that's English heritage. George Orwell, then novelist and political evidence, lived here. Yeah, so this is the idea 
um, very interesting, uh, interesting idea. Now you'll notice there, one, two, three, four plaques, one, two, three, four men. This is not uh, an accident because there are very few women, and that has been um, uh, that has been something that uh, English heritage has been trying to uh, change. So here you have uh, here you have another couple, then Charlotte Bronte. Uh, and Charles White, so Charles White, the, the one of the founders and the first surgeon at the Manchester Royal Infirmary, so going much wider uh, a selection of people who have contributed to society uh, in different different ways. A, a uh, leading um, woman cyclist uh, and a 19th century woman Egyptologist. And then you get something interesting because uh, when you think of uh, experts in Egypt in the 19th century, you imagine them to be mostly men, which certainly they were. But, uh, yeah. Um, and uh, just to finish on the blue plaques then, first of all, the, a, a deliberate uh, attempt to increase the number of women. English Heritage calls for female blue plaque nominees. The organisation wants the public to help it redress the low number of women represent, uh, representing here. We have two things. First of all, uh, an idea of wanting to present the past differently and to uh, valorise the role that women had. And secondly, the desire of English heritage not just to do it but to ask the public to get involved. English heritage could uh, open an encyclopedia and find a thousand women to make plaques of. It's not that they don't have any ideas but they want people to feel involved and that's part of the past in the present as activity and not just as uh, symbolism. Um, this is for this lecture from this week. A new blue pack to be to be unveil, unveiled for the woman who was Churchill's favourite spy. And that's all I have time for at the moment. That's the end of the chapter anyway. There will be plenty more chapters, uh, and so uh, I will see you next time. <laughs>